Greetings to the brothers. This is Wayman Brown, creator of the EsquireProject.com, a website dedicated to helping the self-enterprising black man eliminate barriers to his personal achievement. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Feel free to touch base with me, and I appreciate the support in advance. Now, this next video is in correspondence with one of my articles on my website, and it's entitled The Detriment of Dating Single Mothers for Childless Black Men. You know, there have been countless videos in black male media spaces, particularly on YouTube, discouraging black men from being with single mothers or baby mamas, as the two terms are often used interchangeably. But there are also some varying attitudinal perspectives surrounding said groups of women, most of which focus on the morality issue as to how a woman found herself in such a situation. Now, for this video, we're not focusing on whether a woman became a single mother after she married as a virgin and got divorced. We're not focusing on whether it took place because she was in a relationship with someone for 10 years who she was engaged to and then things fell apart. Or if she became a single mother through random sexual casual partners. It doesn't matter whether she has one child with one man or four children with four men. We are considering other socioeconomic factors as to whether or not she takes primary care of the child or children or other things along those lines. That's not really important for this particular video. For these purposes, we're going to define a single mother simply as a woman who does not recognize having a romantic obligation with or a commitment to the father of her child or any of the fathers of her children. So the main focus here will be in helping the childless black man in America to understand the psychological dangers that he can be putting himself into by dealing with the single mother in order to help him to make an informed decision, particularly when the father of the child is in the woman's life and the child is still very young. Now, my own experiences in combination with the countless stories that I've heard from other black men give me a foundation to speak upon this topic. So I invite you to allow me to show you the need for this matter to be discussed. For this piece, we're going to consider dating and relationships to be synonymous. While there are some differences, dating is still often a precursor to being in a recognized, mutually committed relationship between people. And when the strong emotion of love is involved, especially when coupled with the behavior of sex, more often than not, this can seamlessly build a relationship between a man and a woman where they undergo the process of organizing themselves into each other's lives based on their romantic interest, their mental bond, and or sexual activity. And really the detrimental circumstances, titles aside, when it comes to a childless black man being vulnerable when dealing with a single mother is mostly about one key phrase. That phrase, deep emotional involvement. So let's get into it. Let's say that you're a brother that has his own place. You've got a job or a business, maybe your own personal transportation, and a clear set of goals that you want to hit throughout life. You don't have any children, but you've been wanting to have them with the right woman, and preferably you like to do it in a healthy marital arrangement, if that was possible. So you meet a woman that has a child, and you both end up really hitting it off. You feel a really strong chemistry with this woman and like usual you start texting and talking every day you discover that you have so many different things in common as you built upon that first conversation that you've had you go out a few times and before you know it the two of you start discussing being exclusive this is a pretty common scenario to happen but as you further your involvement with this woman not only will you be entering 
a potential relationship with her. But by default, you also will end up inheriting other relationships as well. For example, the relationship of her and her child. The relationship of her and her child's father. The relationship of the child's father and the child. And then, of course, there's you and the child. And ultimately, you, her, the child, and the child's father all together. And of course, you can add other relationship dynamics such as the family of both the woman that you're involved with as well as the family of the child or children's father, etc. But what are some of the specific psychological and lifestyle areas of danger for the childless black man? Well, to get into that, first, we're going to start off with the first and most significant relationship dynamic here, and that's the relationship of the woman and the father of her child. The reason that I say that it's the most significant is because this relationship is the catalyst for the circumstance of her being a single mother in the first place, and thus someone who could be considered to be available for you. The thing is, as we'll get into it, you'll see that this is basically a relationship shift between her and the father of her child. I don't consider it a relationship split altogether. And you'll see why. So let's say as you've been getting to know this particular woman, she discloses to you that her and her child's father were in an on again and off again relationship for a few years. And during one of their breaks, she discovered that she was pregnant. So they tried to give it another go and they got a place together or maybe he moved in with her. Things were going OK at first for the first couple of months like they normally do. But then they started to have very fierce arguments every day, very heated arguments, which also led to some physical fighting. And as a result, the child's father moved out, got his own place. And now they co-parent, which usually means that two or three times a week. The child's father has the child or pretty much whenever it's convenient for him. And this woman that you're involved in or involved with, rather, all she wants is for her child's father to basically spend time with the child, stay out of trouble, take care of his responsibilities. And she's told you very clearly, very adamantly that she's completely done with the father of her child. But in reality, this woman isn't truly done with her child's father, as most single mothers aren't usually done with the father of their child altogether, especially when the child is still very young. You see, a lot of single mothers that are in a situation like this, they usually aren't really over their child's father or the so-called ex unless one of two things happens. Either one. She literally is just not at all in any way, shape or form attracted to the man anymore. And she sincerely has no interest whatsoever in being with him and doesn't even entertain the thought in her mind. Now, this is extremely rare unless the child was perhaps brought into the world by way of a very casual hookup. Maybe a guy she met at a club and really didn't know altogether. And she never wanted to be with him in the first place or where she never even wanted to be a mother. Now, the second way that a single mother might be done with the father of the child is when she's developed a true calloused bitterness towards the man to where she does not even desire to want him again. And this is something that typically occurs after a long series of very frustrating, disappointing and angry episodes and a lot of fierce animosity that she's built up, which usually takes place over years where the woman has basically reached her breaking point with the child's father. And at this point, sometimes those negative emotions that she has can even turn into a degree of hatred for the man, where she not only sees the father as being irrelevant to the child, but even irrelevant as a human being. Now, a lot of single mothers stay in limbo between these two extremes when it comes to the father of their child. And it's in this limbo phase Typically, when the child is 
usually under the age of five. Before the child enters into some sort of a regular routine at school, that there are several attempts and considerations of reconciliation by one or both parents. You see, the child is still so young and there are so many things to figure out and how they raised their child together. And the child's conception is so recent that certain emotional bonds are often very fresh in the minds of the parents. Now, the woman's blatant refusal to ever be with the child's father typically must exceed her mere displeasure for the father, which normally she'll express through a lot of complaints about him. Because even several years and sometimes even decades after a breakup or a divorce, a lot of single mothers will still often have that what if factor lingering in her mind in relation to how things could have been had the child's father and her actually been able to work things out. So a lot of women who consider themselves done with the father of their child, they will swear up and down that there is no way in hell that they will ever get back with them. But if you probe them, they'll, they'll tend to express a slight change of heart under certain circumstances like, well, if he stops drinking, if he gets a better job, if he supports our child better, if he gets in a church, if he spends more time with his child, if he stops being abusive, if he wasn't a cheater. And then if you ask a little bit deeper, they'll often have a little bit more interpersonal needs that they wanted from the man, such as, well, if he would have been more affectionate to me, if he would have spent more time with me, basically, there are reasons that stop the man and the woman from remaining together. And these reasons, they probably did not intend on existing. No one with a sound mind really intends on bringing a child into the world and raising it in a divided household where there's going to be a toxic dynamic between the parents. In the most ideal setting, everybody would be all under one roof, living in a healthy family arrangement the way that it should be. So if the reasons for a split household did not exist, in other words, there is a very strong likelihood that the man and the woman would still be a family unit. So what can happen when the man demonstrates the change or the changes over an extended period of time that the woman longed for in him but never got? The tie between the woman that you're seeing the child and the child's father will almost certainly end up being stronger than any sort of bonding that you could ever have with her and her child. And this gentleman is despite the fact that you might end up excelling in the role of stepdad and be more of a father to the child, so to speak, than the actual father is. If things could work out between her and the father, and she hasn't yet reached that true point of no return towards him. It would be so easy for her to leave you. So I want you to understand that there lies a possibility or better yet, I think there lies a strong probability that you can become a mere accessory that gets disposed of rather impolitely and inconsiderately. Both sides of the family, both the woman that you're seeing and also the child's father, in large part, no matter how they feel about either one of them as individuals or no matter how much they might think it's not a good idea for them to be together, in large part, they'll end up giving their support of the reuniting for the sake of a family being back together. And it really doesn't even matter if you get hurt in the process. It doesn't matter if you spend the next two years being in that child's life as a protector or as a financial contributor. All the trips to the daycare to pick up and drop off the child, wiping their nose when they're sick, taking them to the park and the zoo, reading bedtime stories, going over their ABCs with them, caring for and loving that child as if they were your own. 
mentoring them and nurturing them. All those things can easily matter not if there becomes room for the original trio to be back together in a healthy setting. But how do you think this idea of being back together intensifies itself between the woman that you're interested in or the woman that you're seeing and the father? Well, just think about those times between parents, those times that they're alone. For example, when she drops the child off to the baby's father for a few days. The father notices that she's been losing some weight. She notices that she likes the new beard on him and that he's been working out. They think of themselves on being on much better terms and they even call themselves friends again. When she drops the kid off, they laugh about old memories. There's not so much tension between them now. They even kind of find themselves flirting a little bit about intimate moments in their relationship. And then she spills a little bit of gossip about some of their mutual friends. If you were to look at this scene, it would almost seem like they couldn't help it. Because they once shared a home, they have a kid. That was her ace. At one point, they were deeply in love. They've been through thick and thin. And no matter how much she despises him, there's a special unique bond that these two have that you simply cannot have with her because it's biologically impossible to do so. On one visit, her child's father tells her, that he's got a new girlfriend now and he just wants to make sure that everything is cool between the new girlfriend and the mom now he's really doing this as a test to see if she'll take him back to see if she'll take the bait to see if she has any sort of interest in him and she'll try to play it cool but honestly she can't help but to notice those little changes that he's making and it's all likely because of a new woman being in his life that's the real reason why he's been wearing that good smelling cologne when she comes around. When he used to barely even shower before bed when they were together. Maybe she's the reason this new girlfriend now. Maybe she's the reason why he can finally keep a job for more than a year without getting fired or without quitting. But why couldn't he do all those things when he was with your girl? Think about those times when your girl and her baby's father video chat about their child every morning. And the child's face lights up to see daddy on the screen. And then as parents, they both look at the child as he matures or she matures and they notice that they have his lips and her nose, his eyes and her cheeks. And as they chat, she lounges around in the gown. A rather revealing one. And after all, why would she change her clothes if that's how she went to bed? It's not like it's something that he hasn't seen before. And during these types of moments, the child's father will often take a shot at trying to get back with her. Despite her making it very clear that she's in a relationship now. But he always tells her how much he misses her and how sexy she is and constantly reminding her of the nights of love making between them and all the special moments that they shared basically asking her to come back home now she might try to brush it off but honestly there's a part of her that likes the attention and there's a part of her that also embraces the warm memories so i want you to think about something do you think it's realistic that when she brings the child over and hands them to the father as they both plant kisses on the child's cheek, that maybe one day when he's just looking just too good and she's just looking too good at that moment that they won't also find themselves planting a kiss on each other's lips. 
Do you really think that they won't ever share a moment again during these exchanges of their child? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that there's a part of her that still doesn't long for him and that still doesn't fantasize about him? Because as much as of a dick as he was, he still knew how to hit it right, didn't he? He had years to explore her body and years to learn how to please her. Do you really think that she's completely done with him? And what reason does the child's father have to respect the new relationship that you have with her? After all, in his mind, this is his baby mama, right? This is his child's mother. So to him, the mentality usually, it's always going to be my pussy. I don't care what nobody say. That's how he thinks. He's placed his stamp on her womb and biologically, it actually always will be his. Now, of course, you don't know what's going on during these interactions between your lady and her child's father. And you're a reasonable man. You're very understanding of the challenges of co-parenting. And you also care about kids. All you want is for your girl to be your girl. For the child to get all the support and love that they need from their parents. And you just want to make sure that there's no extra sexual or romantic or extra business between them as parents. In terms of anything that's not appropriate considering that you're in a relationship with her. Or that you're attempting to build one. And also, maybe you grew up partially or in full in a single mother household, your own self. So you know the importance that a healthy relationship between parents plays in the development of a child. And you wouldn't want anything less than that for your lady's child. And besides, you trust her anyway, right? Trust. When men love women... We trust their word. You actually take her word that everything is kosher. After all, she did say she was done with him, right? She also told you all the things that she disliked about him and that she even hated about this man, right? She even swore up and down. It, there would be no way in hell that she would ever get back with that man, right? Plus, it's been a couple years since they've been broken up, right? But yet all of the little moments of that time that they spend around each other, all those little reminders, all of those moments reinforce the bonding that they have and that they naturally share. And over a period of time, these moments, especially in this woman's mind, will always serve as a constant reminder, a reminder of what if. And that special tie that's between your love interest and the father, despite all of their hurdles and ups and downs, is really what you want with her, don't you? You want to have something special with her. You want to have a sacred place in her heart. You want to have something that is only between you and her. You want that deep, lifelong connection with this woman. Where you're the most important thing. In her life, in terms of the most important man, and she could be the most important thing in your life when it comes to being in a relationship. You want to know that you got her whole heart, don't you? But the problem is, brothers, it's too late. And even further, the type of love that you develop for her, it'll never be matched by her just think about why in this sort of a relationship dynamic the hierarchy of importance in this woman's world is number one her child number two her number three the child's father and then you would be number four so the child has to be put first because the child is a child then second comes her she's the mother she has to make sure that she's taken care of so that she can be there to take care of her child. And then, of course, comes the child's father, since 
the child that they share is a mutual asset between them. And then there's you. And I've been in a situation like this, my own self. Where you actually come in right at the bottom. Because literally, gentlemen, childless guys like me and you in a situation like this are the least important when it's all said and done. And God forbid that she actually goes out and gets a dog. Or you could even find yourself fighting for a roster spot. But in our hierarchy, we're prepared for it to be like this. Number one, the woman that we love. Number two, her child. Number three, ourselves. Interesting, right? As men, we are inclined to be self-sacrificing for the women that we love. The childless black man is in a position to put the woman that we love and even her child, the product of another man ahead of our own selves. And this is such a common thing among black men. But unlike men who have children already, the childless black man can only experience a sense of fatherhood in his relationship with the woman. The special and the sacred tie that men want with a woman in creating a genealogy with her. It does not exist. We're playing a game of emotional Russian roulette if we're to put ourselves in a situation like this. Putting ourselves right square in the bullseye for emotional turmoil and devastation. Our role at best is a volatile one. And furthermore, you'll also discover that even the role that you do have means little when it comes to what happens between the parents. What do I mean? As men, not only are we self-sacrificing for our women, but we also know that we have a natural inclination to protect our women. We look forward to the honor of being able to jump in front of a bullet for a woman that we love. We would go that far, wouldn't we? To protect her. So, if you and your lady were walking down the street, enjoying an evening out, and a random man out of nowhere began to threaten her, whether verbally or physically, not only would she expect for you to handle business, but she would not even respect you if you didn't handle things. But guess what? Let that man be her child's father. So imagine one night she comes over your house and she's got a bruise under her eye and you know it's because the child's father attacked her. You know he's a violent guy. You know he always initiates the violence. You know the history that they have. Your first instinct is to go over there and handle business. But you're disabled from standing up for the woman that you love because in a situation like this, the damage that you cause the father damages the child. So as a man, childless or not, in dating a single mother, you'll get constant reminders that you are essentially an outsider interrupting a broken family's business. And even if you could go over there and deal with that man, you're now actually putting your own self in harm's way over her mess. Where you might actually end up being the victim of violence or where you might actually be the one who's sitting behind bars in order to defend her honor. And she is not the woman that you've actually started a biological legacy with. 
And wouldn't it be some shit if you went over there and did all that and then they still ended up getting back together? But it happens all the time. You're powerless a lot of times when you're dealing with a single mother. And in reality, if you're going to be with her, then you might as well love the baby's father too. As a man in this position, you're basically putting yourself in the role of being an emotional tampon for this woman. And while I would never call any of you brothers this, I'm going to give you an example of how you can also be setting yourself up to be somewhat of an emotional cuckold for a woman. So in more literal terms, an example of cuckolding is a man that submits to his girlfriend's or his wife's sex life with another man. Oftentimes the boyfriend, for example, will view himself as being a sexual subordinate to the woman and because of his low self-image, he finds a degree of humiliating pleasure, but really comfort and security in being able to keep his woman by way of letting another man dominate her sexually. While he watches as a servant. A cuckold state of mind is at least I can have her in my life. That's how low he thinks of himself. So the cuckold waits patiently for his lady to return with her lover to the home that he pays a mortgage on. And when she arrives, her makeup and her hair is not nearly intact like when she left home because of all the frolicking between her and her lover. And they walk into the bedroom that the cuckold shares with his lady when her lover is not too busy. And her lover lays her down and lifts up her skirt and starts to penetrate her deeply. Now the cuckold is in a nearby chair watching his lady's lover go in and out of her as he gives her long, deep strokes and he hears her moan in pleasure seeing her cry tears of joy. And she grips the arm of this cuckold with the same grip as if she were given birth because of all the pleasure that she's receiving from her lover. Her lover reaches his climax and then he gives her a full load as it drips out of her vagina. She then turns to the cuckold to let him perform his duty. So the cuckold picks her up off the bed and he carries her over the threshold to the bathroom where he gets the grand privilege of cleaning her up. He gets some warm water and soap as the man's remains drip out of her. And if it's not humiliating enough, the woman looks at her cuckold boyfriend to finish the job so that he always knows his place. So the cuckold plants a warm kiss on her vagina after it got stretched out. Now this cuck, he's been a part of this scene on several nights, but this time as he rises to his feet, he looks in the mirror and he realizes that he's but a former shell of himself as he wants out of this lifestyle. But he realizes that he has went much too far to ever return back to any form of masculinity. Now, I know that was a disturbing image, but I wanted to use a very graphic image because I wanted you to understand that this is the role that you could potentially be setting yourself up for when you're the boyfriend of a single mother and you become relegated to being a part of her system of dysfunction between her and the father of her child 
instead of regulating a system of orderliness. Now, in some traditional cases, when a man came into a woman's life who was a single mother, he came in to take over. And usually it was because she was a widow or the father had completely abandoned his family. And if the father ever were to return, it would be established that there's a new man in the picture who's now overseeing the rearing of the child and taking care of his former woman. And he no longer holds the primary place due to his negligence and also to help avoid any sort of confusion as to who runs the show. And in some cases, even now, a man will actually adopt a child legally in order to share parental rights over that child's welfare and to show his seriousness as a guardian to the child. So essentially, the stepdad becomes the new dad. But in today's state of so many black children in the black community entering the world as a result of unplanned pregnancies between boyfriend and girlfriend and casual sex partners, it's reported that roughly 70% of children are born into single mother households where there's no structural family arrangement between her and the father. So what most men inherit when dealing with a single mother these days is the byproduct of a fun night in the sack and the dismissive use of contraception. And even when there is a relationship sometimes, a lot of these pregnancies were either unplanned or altogether unwanted. And that's where you'll oftentimes run into a single mother and she'll see the qualities of a man like you or me when we come along. And this is what happens. I once heard a mother complaining about her child's father. Her son was in preschool at the time and the father had apparently not seen his child for several months, despite living in the same city, just 20 minutes away driving. And when the father did reach out to the mother, it was usually to make an empty promise that he would come and get their son for the weekend, buy him some clothes and spend quality time with him. But of course, those weekends never came. And her frustration led her to make a very startling and striking statement that I'll never forget as we sat among a group of acquaintances. She said, I can't wait to get a real man so that I can show my son's father that it took another man to do the job that he was supposed to do, but wasn't man enough to perform. I can't wait to blow it up in his face. Now, after that comment, I was never able to look at this woman the same. The dating landscape in general can come with a lot of pitfalls and traps, but one that can be of a serious danger to a man who is childless when he's dating a single mother is unknowingly being used to make the child's father jealous. Many single mothers have such stark anger and animosity and vindictiveness and spitefulness for the fathers of their children because he either left them for another woman or he's just not present enough for the child. And they'll oftentimes seek out and use another man as a scapegoat to put a gauze on the wound of the broken family scenario that she never wanted to occur. Now, for many of us who are raised with some type of spiritual or a religious upbringing, we might view it as noble to be able and willing to care for a woman who has a child or who has children. And for me, there was actually a time where for many reasons, I actually viewed being with a single mother as not only a dating preference, but even as a part of my own personal responsibility. But the relationship that you form with that child can actually be of an even stronger attachment than the one that you have with the mother in its own way. And that's one of the reasons that this particular video specifies the detriment of childless black men being involved with single mothers. 
You see, many of us men who don't have children, we have a natural love and affinity for children, especially when they're small. We're enamored with our little cousins and our nieces and our nephews and our friends' kids. And I myself, I actually work with small children. And within a matter of weeks, I grew to have a genuine love for each of them individually as I learned their little personalities and traits. And I even felt compelled that if called upon to take care of them as if they were my own. And many of us men are often told that we would make great dads and that there's a need for men like us in our community to be role models for the children of tomorrow. But for whatever reasons, up until this point, we just haven't had kids. Now, in my case, a large part of why historically I had been hesitant about being a father was out of fear of failure, of perfecting that role of father. My thoughts used to be that as a father, I would have to get it all right all the time. And I don't think I would have been able to live with myself if I ever messed up the family through any sort of uh, extramarital affairs or things like that, or not being an adequate provider. And though this would have never been a part of my agenda, we're still human and things still happen. And even not doing enough in the way of teaching and training my child, the thought of that would have in times past been enough to put off not even considering fatherhood. Now, while I'll always probably believe that before becoming a father, I should be able to provide for a child in the way that they have the tools, both tangibly and intangibly, to have the best chances of success in life overall. I also realize that even with my most sincere intentions, that maintaining this gold standard of fatherhood will still come with flaws. Now, being a stepdad actually gives us an opportunity to experience all of the good that we will want to bring to our own children that we haven't had yet with the same level of sincerity. But over time, we'll most likely be inclined to want to make those same investments into our own child. But one of the reminders that you'll get in dating a single mother when you're a part of her program, especially when it comes to things like disciplining and upbringing, is that you're very limited when it comes to the rearing of a child. And when you attempt to steer things in the direction that you see fit as you naturally would as a head of a household or as a leader in a relationship, your actions are going to be capped off clearly because you are not the father of the child. Basically, you'll be like a bank teller that gets a sense of what it's like to feel rich because you handle a lot of money all day and you only fantasize about what it would be like for it all to be your own account. But a lot of times, some women, they'll try to convince you that, well, if you love her, then you should also love her children the same and accept them and look at them as though they're your own, which you actually may. But oftentimes, she'll also want you to be satisfied with that sense of fatherhood because of you overseeing her children instead of you actually having your own children. And a lot of times she'll likely do this because she really doesn't even want to have any more children or maybe she's had her tubes tied and she doesn't even want to have any more or she can't have any more or she's not willing to go through any more surgeries and things like that. Now, if a sense of fatherhood is something that you as a childless black man still want and you haven't been able to get that in a family partnership, then I believe that adopting a child is actually a viable way to experience such. Where actually you get an opportunity to be the true guardian to the child. But if it is very important to you that you have your own children, then taking your time and starting a family with a woman who has no children might be in your best interest. And we, of course, have to understand that Things don't always go as planned, but as long as we're doing our utmost to bring up a child lovingly and making the best way for them, then we can still experience successes as fathers. But in the case of you bonding with her child, 
undoubtedly you'll grow fond of this child and when things go south between you and the child's mother, whether it's due to her reconciling with the father or any other reason, the child will also be ripped apart from your life. And as a childless black man, you get yet another reminder that being involved with a single mother under most circumstances, under most present situations, is temporal at best. And more often than not, you are just keeping the child's father's spot warm until he returned. Now, as you sit home in your bachelor pad, after you experience a roller coaster ride of emotions and your dealings with her, and you sit alone with the sunlight peeking through the blinds, and it warms up your cheek, providing the closest warmth that you felt since she walked away. You sit there as a miserable man. You recognize the expensive lessons, but they're going to cost you mentally and emotionally more than anything. You're bitter. And you're going to have to manage this situation on your own because you can't really turn to your boys in a situation like this. Not when it comes to a matter of the heart. Not when there was so much pain and embarrassment and shame. It's too much to speak on. So when they ask you, hey man, whatever happened to the young lady that you was talking to? You'll have to hold back that bucket of tears that'll end up drenching your pillows for the foreseeable future. And you'll look them in the eye and reply in a somber tone. It just didn't work out. To the brotherhood, I appreciate you so much for tuning into this second video on my YouTube channel. Pardon any sort of background noise that you might hear as I was recording. I do have neighbors. But I definitely like the feedback that I got on the first video and keep it coming. Whatever you got, I definitely want to hear your thoughts. Be sure to like, comment, and share. And as always, may wisdom be with you. Peace out till next time.